Hello and welcome back to this plane based target tracking shooting tutorial series. So in the last video we put our assets into our scene and in this video we're going to start creating the complex patch sequence that's going to be needed to control all of this. So first things first is I'm going to actually want to start to add some animation to these targets before we start getting into the nitty gritty. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this fairly simply, uh, fairly simple way. Uh, we're just going to right click in our patch editor and go to loop animation. And I'm going to animate each of these uh, targets to rotate around themselves. So using this loop animation, I'm going to click and drag from the progress, add a transition. I'm going to set this, uh, keep the X and Z values at zero. And I'm just going to be rotating it around the Y. So I'm going to go 360. We want this to take place over 10 seconds. So I'm going to select each of my targets and I'm going to click on the little arrow next to rotation and simply hook these up like so. So now when I press uh, play, these targets should rotate around like so. Just so we've got a bit of movement in there, just so it looks a bit more alive. It also removes some of the issues that we have with some of these objects where sometimes if the plane tracking hasn't worked super well, uh, they look a little bit like they're facing in a direction that doesn't look quite right. Whereas if you have them rotating, it makes a bit more sense. It looks like they will eventually face the camera. Therefore, the user will be able to identify what is they're meant to be uh, shooting essentially. Like so. Uh, another thing we're going to do is we're going to want these to start to have a bit of a bounce up and down. And to do that, this is the uh, reason why we created this targets control and null object. Uh, we're just going to again, right click, add another loop animation, add another transition. This time I'm going to change the curve to be an overshoot in and out. And I'm going to keep the values at zero on the X and Z axis. And I'm going to change the Y to be 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. So it's got a room of 0 0.1 wiggle room between up and down. I'm going to have this one to be mirrored. And I'm just going to add the duration of this to be around five frames. I'm going to select my targets controller, select the position arrow and hook this up to my transition batch. So now you can see that they rotate and go up and down. At the moment all of our targets are very much fixed in position and no, uh, there's no randomness happening in terms of where they're being positioned in our scene. But we'll be looking at that uh, in a moment once we get into the nitty gritty of the patch sequence. I just want to get these done uh, first because these are something that you could easily forget and they're something that's super simple just to kick us off with. I'm just going to move these out of the way because we won't be needing to touch those again. So we're now going to just simply uh, take a look at Uh, randomizing our values. Uh, actually no, before we do that we're actually going to just um, tell the user whether they have succeeded or not in the game. So if I was to just hit the timer for the time being, you'll see that the timer goes down. And in fact I'll just speed this up by juicing the time there, just so we can uh, see what happens at the end quickly. So the timer counts down, once it hits zero it f uh, stays like this. We actually want the user to be able to easily see that the time is up and uh, control when things are visible. So I'm just going to quickly uh, select my rectangle here, which has my countdown texture on. I'm just going to rename this to be a timer. And I'm just going to duplicate this. And I'm going to call this duplication times up. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have a rectangle on top of our timer that only appears once our time equals zero. And this will just to say to the user, your time is up, etc. 
So I'm just going to create a new material. With this new material selected, I'm just going to import this uh, times up texture I've already created. And I'm going to make sure it's set to flat. And I'm going to turn the alpha test on. I'm going to also going to do that on my timer whilst I remember. So I'm going to go to my countdown material timer and turn on alpha test for that too. Just so we don't get any uh, box bordering when we start getting the targets going through uh, its position when we're in the real world camera. So we only want this times up to appear when the countdown timer equals zero. So from our countdown timer, we're going to click and drag from the value and add an equals exactly. So when this equals exactly zero, we want the timer, uh, sorry, the um, times up to be visible. And we're going to want the targets to disappear. So to do that, again, we're going to go to our targets controller, which has all of our targets parented to it. We're going to use the visible option. So targets controller visible. Click and drag for my equals and add a knot. And then link this up like so. So now if I start my timer off, once that equals zero, these targets should disappear and the times up text will appear. This is a reason we do this is for twofold. One, it tells the user that the game is over and they can't shoot the targets anymore. And two, it also gives us a chance so when we reset it and we start adding in the randomizer for the um, positions of the targets, it looks a little bit more fluid rather than just sort of bouncing from one position to another. Uh, and it just, make, it just hides that randomization from the user's view. So now we've got that, that's basically our most as our, tar as our countdown uh, setup done, now we need to start adding in our bit of fun, which is going to be the shooting of the targets and the randomization of the positions of them. So we will have to revisit the screen tap, uh, and there's going to be some stuff that goes before it um, in a bit. But for now, we're just going to press on. And uh, apologies, I will be using two screens for this. So I will, every so often, you'll see the mouse disappear off screen as I uh, check my patches. So to begin with, we're just going to click from this screen tap and add a random patch. This random patch, we're going to set the start value to be negative 0 0.5 and the end value is going to be 0 0.5. We're going to just um, oops, copy and paste that uh, patch, so we, that random patch, we've got two of them. Uh, the second one, we're just going to change the start value to be 0 0.1. So just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to uh, just add a value in here. This is more for troubleshooting purposes, you don't need to do this uh, with yours. Um, but I quite like to have value patches in between certain areas just so, uh, so I can see what's happening if I need to go back and troubleshoot it. So I'm going to right click and add a pack patch. So what this pack patch will do, it takes three values. Uh, by default, if we're using positions or rotations, it would be X, Y, and Z. So this is going to be related to our first target, which is going to be this middle one here. And I want to move this on the X and Y axis, but I don't want this to adjust on the Z. So I don't want this to move forwards or backwards towards the camera. I want this just to move left, um, left, right, up or down not forward or backwards in the depth. Hence why we're using this pack method. So I'm going to link my top random to my top input on my pack and my second random to the second input. So X, Y and our Z. I'm going to just adjust our Z value to be negative 0 0.5. So that will always be 0 0.5 um, on the position for that target. I'm going to select that target, which is in this case just called target. I'm going to go to its position and add that to my patch editor. And then link this to my pack. So now if I screen tap, you'll notice that that middle target is now randomizing on the X and Y axis. Uh, we need to reset that. So. I just uh, quickly, one thing I've just quickly noticed is we're actually not resetting 
our countdown timer so things aren't reappearing. So just quickly, uh, where the countdown timer is, just from the screen tap, just make sure that's linked to the reset like so. So now it will reset every time our screen is tapped. And to stop that, we're going to add something before this to act as a verifier, so any does it when we double tap. At the moment, uh, if we were to shoot these targets and accidentally miss, we could reset the game. So, but we'll fix that uh, towards the end. So as you see, every time I tap, it's moving that target around on the X and Y, but not moving it any closer to the camera or further away. And we're going to be doing this a similar method for this for each of our targets, just using different uh, values in the uh, outputs. So again, I'm just going to tri click and drag, add two more randoms. And again, I'm just uh, checking my uh, second screen to make sure that I'm doing this uh, correctly. I'm going to add uh, another pack. And this time, this is going to be associating, associated to our uh, target over here. So we actually want this to move on the Z and the X. Uh, hang on, do we want to move on the X, Y? So we want this to move on to the X axis, we just don't want this to move on the X axis, the top value. So we want this to move on the Y and Z, not on the X. So it always stays this distance from this uh, plane target or uh, tracker. So I'm just going to uh, make sure the first of these new randoms is zero. Second one is going to be 0 0.5 again. We're making sure we're not going too drastic with our values. And it, both of these will be exactly the same. So 0, 0 0.5 for both. And just link these to the bottom two inputs on the pack. So the Y and the Z values. And our X value, we're just going to keep at 0 0.5. So it is always 0 0.5 away from the plane tracker. Selecting our second target, or target zero, I'm going to take its position values and link this up, like so. Now, if I just uh, scale this up a little bit. And we'll uh, check if this is all correct in a moment. So this might, uh, I'm just going to copy these two randoms again, copy and paste. And we're going to do this for our final target. And one more pack. And we're going to hook the, it's going to be a negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 and 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. And we're going to hook these up to the, uh, the uh, Y and Z values again. Actually, no, we don't need to do that. What am I doing? I'm being a bit silly here. In fact, we're just going to uh, reuse these two randoms here, but I'm going to offset them slightly. So where I'm going to do that is I'm going to click and drag from here and add an add value and just increase this by 0.01 and then I'm going to add a subtract and have this subtract by 0.01 as well. So I want my top random to be linked to my add, my second random to be linked to my subtract. So it should have something that looks a little bit like this at the moment. Again, apologies if this is a, gets a bit confusing. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. And I'm going to go to my second target, get its position, and just hook that up to my pack here before I forget. And we're going to link the first add to the second input on this third patch and to the last input on the third pack here. So let's just reset. Just see what's going on here.
So they are all moving around, keeping semi-distant from each other. And again, if these values aren't right, we can uh, always come back into them and fix them later. For the time being, uh, that should be fine. So there we go, you should see they're all moving around randomly. But we're not having them moving too crazily, just so we don't have uh, too many issues. And we could even increase the offsets a little bit so they don't have to leave them more random if we wanted to by just adjusting the values here. Okay, so that is our simple randomization for the target positions. Uh, in the next part, we're going to look at randomizing the rotations. Uh, so we actually have the targets uh, rotating around, so they don't stay in one place, they're not just going up and down and rotating on their own axis, they also rotate around the user this often, just to make it a bit more challenging. And we're also going to be looking at how we uh, detect collisions when we hit these targets and get these little target icons up here to change accordingly. And again, we'll revisit that um, in the future with a score system when we start looking at JavaScript. Um, but for the time being, we'll be using just these visual indicators to show whether they've been hit or not. So see you in the next part. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again soon.